Hello, and welcome back to the Tucker and Crowley Report. I'm joined by Franklin Tucker, Senior Editor of the Belmontonian, which you can find at belmontonian.com, and I'm Mike Crowley. And first, I want to remind our viewers that any comments, viewpoints, or thoughts expressed on this program are those of the speakers and not and do not represent those of Belmont's of the Belmont Media Center, the town of Belmont, or Comcast or Verizon. All right, Franklin, let's talk about um, let's talk about development plans in the town. That's right. Uh, very interesting uh, meeting uh, that was held uh, a joint meeting of the planning board and the select board. Uh, where they um, uh, were, where they received the um, uh, basically these. Uh, um, let me see what's the official uh, word for that. Um, proposal? It's the uh, uh, financial modeling for the proposed pure code site. Okay. Yeah, you know, the the two hundred to two hundred and twenty unit um, uh, residential um, apartments that would go in uh, where the doggy daycare and pure, the pure code plating. Uh, facility is on Hittinger and Brighton. And it's uh, the, the Tosi family who owns the site that's, that's making right. this proposal. And and this is, and, and the meeting was for the financial um, um, plan, for the financial modeling of it. And it was done by the Watertown, um, <clears throat> the Watertown firm of uh, Landwise. Okay. Yeah, and uh, they said that, uh, you know, that, um, that, you know, and they were told, you know, can, can, does it, does a residential uh, uh, um, development of this size work? And it does, you know, even with parking that is, uh, um, that is surface parking, or, and this is uh, just for a hundred cars. So, and um, so, so, so basically, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a four, four and a half story, five story building with mm -hmm. a retail along Brighton and the first part of, uh, in the, in this first building. Okay. That's the, the facing building. Um, and, we like to see that uh, uh, this is what it looks like. This is a rendering. Okay. No, nothing special. <laughs> well, it's special for the people who possibly live there. Um, but um, <clears throat> so uh, the firm said, yes, this is a possibility. And then uh, the uh, select board and the planning board heard from the Tossi family themselves. Okay. And uh, they said, you know, uh, we envision a high-end, beautifully designed, mixed-use residential and retail commercial development. You know, and, yep. and, and this is, and they said that uh, by far this is the the best use for that area. You know, you don't want commercial anymore. You don't want um, a plating uh, company, even though it's a very successful one. Um, uh, so they said, look, this is the perfect time. Let's do it. You know, let's let's do this now, and uh, everybody will benefit. No. That's that's not what the no. <laughs> that's not what so many members of the of the planning board and select board. Um, so not everybody said. is sang sanguine with the uh, proposal. So so what what's being said about it? Well, the it, uh, the the first thing that was said, you know, that the, the, the Tussies made their presentation, and then uh, Elizabeth Dion, um, who I think uh, has many reasons to be opposed to this, said, you know, this is. You know, I don't trust you. Basically, she said that. You know, I don't trust you. Uh, speaking to the Tossi, says I just met you. Maybe you know, after I meet you for a, a lot longer, I can I can trust you what you're saying you're going to build. But see, this house has to do with um, the uh, MBTA Communities um, Act. That is what what the uh, town meeting is going to decide on right. on the week of November eighth in the special town meeting. Now we know that the, the this um, uh, mass communities is a, a way of uh, helping along um, uh, housing, uh, different, uh, more housing in Belmont. And, you know, it, it give, it's the aspiration is that it could help build 1,635 um, um, units of housing. You know, that's not saying that 1,635 is coming, but it's, um, you know, that is what uh, the town is going to be voting on. Now there's two there's so, two so versions. Of, I, I do want to ask you. Oh, go ahead. The two about yeah, the there's, two there's, there's two versions of that. Uh, there's two maps, right? Um, or two versions that the town meeting would be voting on. One has um, is a uh, much uh, friendly to um, uh, commercial uh, so, building building. They're, which, they're set aside which, commercial, which uh, attempts to preserve as much commercial space as possible. That's right. In a town that doesn't have any commercial right. space. 
And the other one would uh, have much more residential and it would uh, include the, this Tossie development of okay. uh, 220 units. Now you have, um, you know, the, uh, there are pro-development people in town that would like to see something built on that site. The best use, they believe, is residential. You have the housing uh, trust and the people who uh, support housing, like uh, Rachel Heller, mm -hmm. saying this is going to be this will be a great addition to the town because we really do need a lot more different kind of housing, and this would bring you know one to two fa one to two bedroom apartments to mm -hmm. the town. So that seems like a, a good mix. You have people who are opposed to it, and the, and the opposition really is one of two. Uh, one is um, he, um, it does away with that commercial. Uh, element and right. you know they won't they, they believe that the best use for that uh that for that site is uh some kind of commercial development you know we don't know people are throwing out ideas they all sound good um and the second one is you know this is a uh for 60 years or 50 years this has been a highly industrialized site you know with with very uh, bad chemicals you know how much is you know how much is going to cost to clean up that that site and you know uh, do, do we know that number no. and of course the, no one knows that number because the remediation we don't know what that cost is it, but has this been factored into the planning for this proposed development the tossies say yes uh, the the, uh, the critics say no you know they, they they're basically saying look you want to come in and use uh, the uh, the uh, um, the MBTA Communities Act under under Section Three A for best use, um, uh, and basically build something there. And, you know, they're not saying that they they won't build the, this uh, this um, um, this development uh, that uh, that was uh, fi that was uh, done a financial analysis uh -huh. on, but they're saying. If you find if you find that you're you've got you're really deep in in in, in um, um, just bad environmentals at that site, you may say, you know, we're not going to put like uh, we're we're going to change the uh, development because you know we have to spend more money on it. And we don't know you know what what the what the cost could be, and they could change it because it is under you know it is you know uh, under under three A they can build basically what they want. All right. So, you know, they don't have to fall. They don't, you know, they can give you as many promises as you want, but they don't have, you know, at the end of the day, if it, if, if it warrants it, they can change it, you know, for, for the, for the best use of that land. And, and, and then, hey, well, wouldn't, wouldn't the planning board um, ultimately have a say in, of course, in whatever of plans are brought? I, I think that there's a, there's a, there's a, um, um, the sky is falling type of issue here uh -huh. you know, saying, Oh, well, they can change it, whatever they want. No, the town has a lot of, uh, have a lot of safeguards, um, um, uh, such as the planning board and, and site plan review and, and things like that. And uh, they can also talk about something that I think is a, is uh, one of the issues that really hasn't, wasn't talked about because we, because everybody was talking about environmental and that was parking. You know, they have they have a hundred parking spaces for two hundred units. You know, where are they going to put the other other uh, the other one hundred cars? You know, because you know, what if every every person has a uh, a vehicle? And basically, right. basically, people went like, I don't know. <laughs> it was an issue that that was not resolved, to say the least. Why why is there such limited parking on on the site? It, um, it's a basic. It's it, it's it may be almost three acres, but it's really not. You know, if you put uh, those buildings there, you know, you're you're going to have an issue, uh, much like um, uh, the hill the hill estates. You know, the hill estates are seven eight stories tall, mm -hmm. and their parking is outdoors too, and and, that, and that's a limited parking too. But they could. Go along the side. There was enough land, both in in the courtyard area mm -hmm. and also in the back, and also on the side. They, they developed that, where they could put the, the number of units that you know the number of uh, parking spaces. There's oh. not that much space there actually. Now, is there any reason they couldn't go underground for additional parking? Yeah, it's too expensive. The, that makes it just the development could not be uh, uh, fiscally viable if it goes underground. So, it, so there's a lot of issues that are coming up, um, um, and it, it sounded in many ways like that, that these two sides are uh, miles apart. Okay. Know? And uh, but there, if there was one, um, um, there was one little suggestion that uh, I thought it held a lot of uh, weight, and that was uh, Carol Barbarian, who is the I believe she is the vice chair of the uh, planning board, mm -hmm. and she said, "Look, 
Um, why don't we look at the uh, zoning? And, and you know, we're not going to do spot zoning. That's illegal. And we can't do that in Belmont. But why don't we change all the zoning? Let's change the, 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 uh, the zoning in that area, which is general business. And general business is just a very small part of Belmont, surprisingly. It's the pure code. It's Frank French, which mm-hmm. is across the train tracks. It's the high school. It's the DPW. Mm-hmm. And it's a few other spots. You know, nothing really of, of uh, it's not very big. And she said, look, we're going to have a, a, a special town meeting in February. Why don't we set up something where we go to Tossie? Hey, you're not going to go under 3A. You know, we, we, did, we, we know that because it's just we, we're 40, you know, we're, we're, we're about 45, 44 days away. Well, that was last week. So it's maybe 40 days from when you're bringing this proposal and you want to get it through on town meeting. That may, be, may, may not be uh, feasible simply because, of, you know, you want to do a lot of work. Why don't we change zoning? Why don't we change the wording, the zoning, uh, the, the, the zoning itself for general business so it makes it possible where you have these, where you, where you write in, you know, if you're going to build something on an environmentally sensitive area, you have to have, you know, you have to have this much money or this much, you know, uh, set away. And, and I think that's a really, really good answer. You know, that solves an issue. You know, the Tossies will be able to build their sure. area and not and not be you know hemmed hemmed in by you know like too many constraints but the town also can have added protections on top of what the planning board and and, and the site plan review would have well that that's that, a- that was an interesting very interesting idea and i and you know that you know, and after the meeting you could see you know patrice garvin our town administrator talking with the representative um uh uh, C. Rosales of, uh, of of the Tossi family. Mm-hmm. They're just talking, and you know, you could you could almost feel that there was some kind of let's get a compromise. You know, let's let's see what we can do where we get this built, and or you know, uh, get this built, and um, because this is really the only option. You know, the Tossi okay. family can basically say, hey, we have a successful uh, commercial entity. We'll just keep it here, and it is. It's very successful. And why not have doggy daycare and make a fourth story <laughs> for dogs? And um, uh, because, you know, the, while people are saying, hey, this is a great place for commercial real estate, hey, they're not the owners. You know, this is the Chaucey so, family, the owners. So, so, Franklin, nothing, nothing, nothing will be decided immediately. But, but. Oh, you know, that's not true. It has to be decided before uh, we go to town meeting, before we go to, to a special town meeting. Well, November well but I want to ask you right. about that. So, so. So decided in what sense? We have the, well, the possibility that we have two maps coming before town meeting, one that includes uh, this pure coat site um, as um, available for residential development, right. which would suit the which would suit the, uh, the landowner. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The owner. um, and, and one which um, um, attempts to protect that 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 land for for uh commercial development that's right but again you know we, we say protect the land for you know or set set aside the land for commercial development mm-hmm. unless you're the unless you're the property unless you're the property owner you know you're the one who's going to decide what goes on that property you oh know? i'm right of course <laughs> but i know that the tossies have, have talked about building another facility i think down south you know taxes and all that um so it, it might be a situation where they're eager to to move but you know, do you want to keep that, you know, but they could move this year or they could move 10 years from now. Do you really want a commercial development on that site? You know, we don't know how, you know, how it's going to be built. So it's a, it's a, it's going to be a negotiation um, uh, one way or the other. So uh, we could get, you know, they could get the um, uh, approval of the uh, select board, which would be uh, a two to one vote mm-hmm. because you'd have to think that uh, Matt Taylor, who is the other member of the select board, uh, uh, along with um, 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 Epstein, uh, Mr. Epstein, Roy, Roy, Roy Epstein. Epstein. And, um, you know, it would they vote as a block to uh, promote this plan and promote the map with, um, with pure code in it. And, um, but, you know, how, how many people are, are you know, the, Belmont is pretty s- skeptical about, you know, like approving something without knowing every, every little detail. So, and, you know, and, 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 and the environmental section is just, that's and, a that's a deep dig. And yet, for for purposes of the of the MBTA communities, um, 
uh, requirements, uh, the town has to vote something before the end of the year. That's right. And, 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 and does, course, doesn't it have to be approved by the state before the end of the year as well? Uh, no, I think you just have to send it in. Okay. You know? and, and, and it is a situation where uh, only three communities have either denied it or, you know, uh, failed to present something to the state. Every other community has, has stepped forward. So. Okay. And I think Elizabeth Dion has said publicly she wants to have some, she wants to, she wants to be in compliance. She does not want to be uh, having to talk to the state about, you know, uh, penalties and, and punishments for uh, okay. not doing it. So, so the the bottom line with respect to this proposal is that there there could well be some behind the scenes negotiations course, that take place, always. and and we 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 may see some compromise or a, a different flavor of development emerging, um, and. Um, and the implications are as well for the special town meeting coming up in November um, when we're voting potentially two different maps um, under the, the, the requirements for MBTA communities. That's right. And I think they want that compromise simply because they don't want to have a contentious uh, town meeting where you're spending three nights, <laughs> three nights talking about this and trying to find out what, what exactly wants to be done. I think they want to have something nice and clean, nice and easy for uh, town meeting members to, to pass because they don't want to see a fight. And because a fight, if there's a fight, you can easily see both maps uh, failing because you got to get a two thirds vote. And I don't, you know, out of, what is it, 250, 260 people who usually show up, you know, uh, what's that? <laughs> I don't even remember, but like 180 maybe. I don't think you can find 180 votes. All right. So, yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but um, in terms of potential uh, contention, um, this also brings us to our, our second topic, which, um, you know, oftentimes is contentious, and that is the town budget. We've had our first budget summit. What can you tell us? Well, the first budget summit was very, uh, uh, very staid and, uh, <laughs> you know, just the facts, ma'am. Uh, kind of meeting. It, it uh, presented uh, um, everything that they were trying to do, uh, the, uh, the town is trying to do in terms of uh, really lengthening, in, in many ways, this is about lengthening the um, revenue stream you know, for both the town and schools so that uh, you could stretch out the override. Um, and so far, you know, we have a three-year override. They want to stretch that out to four. Uh, it would be just incredible if they could stretch out even to a fifth year um, uh, before they go. And as everybody says, you know, there is going to be another override. You just don't know when, whether it's going to be three years from now or five years from now or four years from now. Um, so it was basically a, a very interesting meeting. Um, it was, like I said, uh, a lot of facts, a lot of things that uh, the town has been uh, doing. And they really talked about um, the... Um, uh, uh, the override mitigation fund. That was a fund that was set up uh, by the town uh, at the last town meeting. And mm -hmm. it was basically saying, you know, we're going to, this is, we're going to use funds that we received in the override and we're going to try to stretch the override benefits for, you know, another four or five years. And, um, and they, and they, and there was projections uh, that were presented, you know, and some, there was some good news. Um, All right. So Franklin, um, um, what does this all mean in terms of process and budget implications going forward? Right. I think I think they uh, really uh, we, they talk about um, uh, they talked about you know, managing and mitigating future overrides. And, um, and that meant, you know, what are they going to do to stretch out their this override uh, that just passed? And I think the most important part is that they are saying that this is a revenue first budget process. And uh they are going to be presenting very early uh, in October um, this month. Surprisingly, they're going to be coming in and saying, "This is what we. This is town schools. This is what you know. This is uh, from all the projections that we can find, all the guidance that we have. This is how much money you're going to have to spend. You know, this, you're not going to get anything more. Um, you're going to. This is your target, and you're going to. You know, this is not uh, unlike in the past where, really, the last." Um, you know, the, um, the budget process would go on until April, May, and, you know, just so, before town meeting. So, so Franklin, let me ask you, what, what, what are these targets developed so early in the process based on? And, it, it based on many of the uh, projections that the town uh, uh, created 
uh, during the override. Remember, there was, a, you know, there was an override projection uh, if we passed the override and we didn't pass the override. And a lot of that had to do with protected revenue. And so, right, so the, but, so but it's, it's, we, we have increasing labor costs. We have, oh, we, have, the we, have nego- we have, we have, the, uh, the schools are going through uh, labor negotiations currently. Mm-hmm. Um, um, a, there, there are implications for for colas for both school and town employees. Um, there's, there's already talk about uh, what um, you know how this is going to affect many of the things that the schools are going to be doing, and one of it is negotiations. And I, I believe that they, that the people who are uh, supporting this revenue, you know, process, uh, they're saying, look. Um, when you give a target, you know, and you have an, an amount, you then can go to the schools and say, um, schools, this is what you can have. Go to your negotiations and tell them you're not getting any anything more. But, but and, this and, happens and, all the time, I, Franklin. There's nothing new about this process. But, In fact, the revenue first notion behind this process, that's always been the budget it's, process it's, in Belmont. You know, and you, I, and I, and you I, say I, that, I have to disagree. I, 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 can, disagree I can speak from the authority of having served on the Warren Committee for many years, having served on the School Committee. This is the way the process works. The fundamental change that's taking place now is that decisions are being, that they're attempting to drive decisions earlier in the process. Right, exactly. So, so that would make it more fiscally responsible. They can then say, I, I shouldn't say fiscally responsible. I should say... Um, uh, it, what it does is it frees up... Certainty. It gives you a certainty. They, they look at it as a certainty and um, on your budget. And, um, you know, there are already people are saying, you know, there's a prominent people in town who are saying, look, Teachers are looking for a strike. You hear it here first that the teachers are looking for a strike. They saw what happened in Newton. They believe they can re- replicate that in Belmont. And I'm like, you know, I'm really not hearing that from the teachers' end. You know, I, they, I don't think anybody's ever looking for a strike. It, or, yeah, they're not looking for that fight. But uh, there's there are people are saying, look, you're going to have to have it one way or the other. We might as well have it. You know, might as well have it out in the first year. And I, I'm always amazed when people are so you know, eager to say these things. It's always uh, um, it's always fun fun for for me because you know. Okay. I, I like I like it when people throw grenades in a crowded room. So I want to ask you, Franklin, what happens next in the budget process? Well, we're going to have uh, those um, uh, budget um, uh, numbers uh, produced very early in October. I believe it's the next uh, pro- it's the next. Um, meeting and I had it here and we have a uh, uh, we have that budget process in October 23rd revenue forecast and allocations that's the important so revenue. so October 23rd would that also be the second budget summit that's right the second budget summit and like I said revenue forecast and allocations in town and school budget drivers all right they're so- very interesting and then in December the budget Work will go to the boards and committees, you know, like they always do. Sure. And then the preliminary budget will be posted on the 17th of January. And then they also know that the governor, Governor Healy, will be presenting her budget on the 22nd. So that's just a week later. And then on the 23rd, there will be a budget number three, review preliminary budgets. And that that should be it. And, that, and then we go with that. All right, Franklin, we'll have to to see what happens on this issue and others. And as always, you can find more of Franklin's reporting at belmontonian.com. Be sure to tune in next time. We will see you then.